So in a previous video, we took a look at track presets. We spent a lot of time focusing on virtual instrument because I think they are super useful, especially for people who are composers, working with lots of virtual instruments, being able to adjust everything over here and being able to kind of tailor exactly how you want your instrument to come in, load effects, reverb sends, anything, they're super useful. In this video though, I wanna focus on audio. So I have three documents open, check this out. This is kind of like a something I kind of figured out by accident. If you have just two documents open, clicking this once will toggle back and forth between both of the active documents, but clicking it if you have three or more, you get an actual indication of what's what. So let's hop over to another session, which I prepared, we'll give this a moment. And if we take a look at this song over here, this is basically, I've just dragged in some stems from um, that were printed or archived from a mix I did because I had to stem this out for live shows if they needed to perform with a live band. Well, take a really quick listen. Okay, I've used this song before. I'm sure you guys have heard this before. Let's focus on this track for a second. Okay, really interesting note about this. <clears throat> this particular performance, I recorded remotely. I was in my studio here. We were using Session Wire. The artist was at her studio at home, and we used Session Wire and high quality audio send and receive. And I basically sent her out um, the two mix. <clears throat> she sang along, and I recorded it actually back into my DAW. So anyways, I'll include a link in the description if you're interested in checking that out. It's a really, really awesome program. But let me hop over to the actual mix session of this for a second. And let's take a look at the actual track that we were singing that, that made it into the final. So this is a track over here. We've got a ton of stuff going on. I have a ton of plugins and I have a lot of different sends. And also if we take a look at the actual mix console, and also if we take a look at the actual mix console in terms of the routing, this lead vocal over here goes to Mixbus, which is down here. And then Mixbus goes to Mixloud, which is over here and everything gets printed. But in addition to that, all these different send effects, which we can see over here, plate verb, vox doubler, vox delay. Uh, we have a couple side chains. These are all going to uh, different sends, which are also going to mix. So there's so much routing based on just that one track. It's not just one track that makes a sound. It's one track going into a mix bus, going into effects and everything like that. So that's just something to take into consideration. So needless to say, there's a lot of different elements that make up the sound. I'm going to right click and let's choose store track preset. And I'm going to call this you to this. I'll just give this, um, like an acronym name and I don't have any folders right now, but I could actually make one just by clicking in here. I could make a MH music folder and I will click OK. So now I've just saved this. Let's hop now over to our other song, which is basically the stems from this song, plus a vocal that was recorded remotely. That's just happens to be synced in the timeline. Now, at this point, there's a couple different ways that we can do this. I could go to effects and let's head up here and we can go to track presets and then in image music, I could drag and drop this in or we can right click over here and I can load a track preset. So it really depends on what you want to do. Now, I'm going to go ahead and load this and we'll click OK and take a look at what happens here. Okay, so it's loaded a track preset. The other thing about track presets is we have things where we can have um, content locked to it, like music loops and stuff like that. But with a track preset, it's just kind of like a blank slate. You can almost think of a track preset as like a macro for importing a mix template almost. Because take a look at this. This lead vocal brought in my mix bus, which is over here. It brought in my mix loud. It brought in all of my uh, effects over here. It brought everything in. Now, at this point, all I would have to do is just kind of like hop over here. Let's take a look to see what this is using. It's using ProDS, Auto-Tune. I want to make sure it doesn't have any hardware on it. Nope, doesn't look like there's any hardware. So if I was to play this, let me make sure my bus compressor's on. That's on. Take a look at what's on my mix bus and take a look at what's on Mixloud. Let's actually turn our limiter off. Oh, oh, oh. That's the exact same Otra effects. Now I'm going to delete or rather mute the other one. Oh, oh, oh. Vuelto, miedo, 
that's one preset. That one preset brought in all of these different settings, all of these sends over here that were active, that were being used. So I have this one, this one, and this one. It brought in my mix bus, which has my bus compressor, a pipeline plugin, and it has my dangerous Bax EQ, which I generally have on my master. And then it routed that to my mix loud, which has a pro L2, which I, I deactivated just because I don't need it that loud. But this one track preset, it brought in everything that had to do with this one sound. So in terms of audio, um, I might consider making track presets for things, but also if I needed to do something on the fly, I now have tons of options in terms of being able to copy channel settings and paste them from one song to another. But if also if it's something that I really like the sound of and I want to use it as a starting point, just store a track preset. And it's super easy to be able to work with track presets in general. And they also will bring in everything else that was downstream. They brought in all my effects. They brought in my mix bus. They brought in anything that was downstream in terms of making up that whole entire sound. So track presets for audio. I find it a little weird that they don't actually recall on a track, like if I were to load the preset here, I would kind of expect that it would load it on the same track, but it's not a big deal because the other thing is that I could, for example, open this up over here and I could just actually copy the channel settings and then go back to my original track or any track for that matter. And then I could just right click and I could paste the channel settings and it will be the exact same thing. So either way, I have the ability to get the track preset in my session. It's very easy for me to choose how I want to apply it. So that is working with track presets and audio tracks, something I'm going to spend a lot of time kind of focusing on and, and using henceforth, but between virtual instruments and audio tracks, very, very welcome feature indeed. Anyways, that's all the time I have available for this video. Hope that you enjoyed this content and we will catch you in the next one. Cheers.